Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining today. Uh, as per usual, going to give uh, just a few moments for Zoom to let people in. So we'll start momentarily. Wait for the number to slowly uh, kind of plateau a little bit and then, uh, then we'll get underway today. Perfect. I think that's starting to slow down, which is good. Um, I'll yeah do a bit of an intro anyway. So if anyone's late, um, they can yeah I guess not miss the key content. Um, so my name is Matt. If you've um, not met me or listened to a webinar of mine uh, just yet, so today we're going to go through um, some practical tips on saving kind of time and streamlining your month-end management reporting process. So. It's going to be more of like a practical webinar today. I'm going to cover off um, why that is shortly. There'll be a little bit of like an in-product application, but it's definitely not going to be like an end-to-end -end demo or anything. A couple of things just for, before we start. There, this will be recorded. It is being recorded. Um, so if you want a recording, you'll get one. Um, after the webinar, same goes for all the other webinars that I ran this week. So if any of those other ones look um, like they may be of interest, but you perhaps didn't register, just reach out to me. There'll be a couple of slides of my contact details on here today, uh, but reach out and ask for those recordings. I'll send them through as well. I think it'll be probably early to mid next week where the recordings are sent out. But if you haven't heard from me or a member of the team uh, within a week, uh, by all means, just get in touch and so hey, I want the recording and we'll sort that out. So it's going to come with a practical PDF with um, just kind of like some of the key takeaways, I guess, as well as like a little checklist that you can run uh, your business through to see um, how you're kind of going with uh, your month end uh, reporting process. Uh, do get involved. So if you have any questions, I've got kind of a second screen here, the Q&A and chat up and stuff. So if um, if there is anything you want to ask, by all means, please do ask it. Um, I'll try and pick it up on the fly, but there's, there'll also be some time uh, towards the end of the webinar uh, today. Uh, we typically won't run to the 45 minutes. Um, so there's plenty of time basically to go over any questions that you uh, may or may not have. So let me get underway. So agenda. So we're going to start off by just um, covering off, yeah, I guess why I think it's even a topic worth co covering. Then there'll be a little bit of a reflection. Um, so again, if you've been on the webinars this week, you're probably well used to this format by now. But if you haven't, um, this is basically just like a couple of minutes where I'm quite be glad to hear. And then you can reflect on a few questions to see where you're currently at as a business um in terms of your management reporting um process uh, i think it's probably some accountants on here as well so this is, is geared a little bit more in terms of like vernacular towards um businesses but there's nothing stopping you again to kind of tailoring those reflection cues for your uh your firm then i'll jump in product just to show you how uh, fathom can achieve some of these things again um there's other ways you can achieve some of these things this isn't kind of like a selling demo type type webinar as just uh, indicative of how tech in general can help you achieve um, some of these time savings then there'll be tactics um, just kind of the summary afterwards of um, key things you can take away and at the end there'll be time for you to uh, basically take actions from this because i always think there's a lot of webinars out there, there's a lot of content out there a lot of sales conferences a lot of times you kind of hear all these points and nothing's ever really done so i kind of I, you know if i'm at those kind of conferences i question what's um what's the value really so please do if you can come away with at least one or two actions uh, and have dates next to those but we'll cover it off a little bit later as well so i'm just going to spin up the first poll it's short and snappy there's literally just two questions um i'm just intrigued to see what the answers are basically based on your reporting process at the minute so the first one is now live so hopefully that pops up somewhere in your zoom screen uh please do answer it if you uh, if you can and i'll share the results of that after um some people have answered too so just asking you about your reporting templates like to kind of do you use them yes uh, always yes sometimes or no and do you feel like your current process saves time compared to your previous process um perfect lots of answers streaming in now leave that open for a couple more moments and i'll close it in uh, just uh, just a few minutes 
Let's get in touch. So yeah, like I just want to have a couple of slides of my details. So um, this is a little bit different to how we've traditionally ran webinars at Fathom. It's a little bit more practical. Like there's a reflection element where you kind of, there's like a task for you to do. There's also actions off the back where hopefully you're kind of writing down on kind of pieces of paper or uh, Google Doc or whatever, the actions you're going to take from it. Uh, but also if you think uh, there will be a poll at the end saying whether or not you think it's useful. Uh, but if you have like, Full of feedback, um, please do email me, whether that's good, bad, or ugly. I'm keen to hear it because I'm trying to make sure that everything that we're doing, um, kind of Fathom EMEA is really kind of, um, I guess, helpful and it's, and it's helpful to the audience. So um, hopefully this is, but if it isn't, let me know. And if it is also, uh, let me know. Cool. So rules and gauge, I've touched on probably all of these already, but um, just to reiterate, so it's not going to be like a holistic end-to-end -end product demo today. Um, whilst there's a time and place for those sorts of webinars, um, I think educational, practical ones are a little bit more uh, useful, in my opinion. Uh, if you do want a product demo, of course, reach out. We can definitely arrange for that, but it will be more tailored. It won't be a generic one-to-many um, product demo. Get involved. So yeah, ask questions, ask chats, do answer the polls when they come up, um, provide me with feedback. Yeah, again, good, bad or ugly, just send it through and also take action. Again, you're carving out, um, you know, 30 to, to 40 minutes of your time this morning to, to listen to this. If you watch it on demand, it's probably similar. You can probably skip through to be fair, but it's still a bit of time. There's an opportunity cost associated with that. So please do take action off the back of this uh, if you find any little point is perhaps helpful for your uh, business or your practice. Cool, that's decent participation levels in the poll. So let me just end that now and I'll share the results. So um, looks like most people use reporting templates, which is great. Um, most people do it sometimes, not always. Um, and a lot of people are saving time with their current process, which is which is great. Um, so I'll leave that share for a few moments and then we can um, get into the product. So what I think this is like relevant, like why we why I put the content together today, basically. So there's a few reasons. First one is just more time. Um, using tech can automate um, a lot of the, the manual uh, work that typically goes. Like if I just uh, pick on Excel, for instance, um, Excel reporting, super flexible, um, but very, very manual. One formula goes wrong. It can take a while to, to find that out. Um, and kind of reverse engineer where that did go wrong. So that time saving is is huge. And you know, the um the title of the day of the the talk kind of saving days isn't like made up. We have like several case studies where people have saved like weeks actually um in their process, particularly with consolidations, for instance. So at that time that's um freed up can let you then do other things, um, you know, whether that's just, you know, actually go home on time uh, to have a meal with family or whether that's actually to uh, be more revenue focused or, you know, whatever it is. I think a lot of people don't get too excited in general um, to kind of labor over manual Excel spreadsheets. You can actually do the stuff that makes you a little bit more excited, perhaps. Also scalability. So um, if you were going to go over this in the product, actually, but if you have more than one entity, you need to copy stuff across. You're not redoing really all of the same work. You can kind of copy um, it over. So again, it's more of a scalable approach, I guess, to your management reporting offering. Um, so there's also kind of, yeah, um, what's the word for that? There's also scheduling and stuff you can do, which again, makes it more scalable kind of month on month, even in the single entity view. Uh, less stress. So again, if you have more time in a day, there's less stress because you can meet those deadlines. You can collaborate with um, with people, kind of share um, the burden a little bit in terms of creating these reports rather than again having to download it, send it off, and kind of work separately, and then try and like um, almost find and replace in, in different Excel's or whatever the other softwares that you're using. Also, more reliable, so it's cloud based, so you can work from anywhere um, and kind of use tools like Fathom to um, save this time. Uh, and again, also the automations um, are typically more reliable than like a downloaded spreadsheet. Because if you lose that one version, you're kind of, you're kind of done, but there's obviously version history and stuff. Cool, let me just shop, stop the all sharing for now. Perfect, cool. So reflection, so, Take a couple of minutes here. So 11 past, according to my 
watch. Um, and kind of just jot down these things. Again, if you're an accountant in practice, pick like a, an average or pick a few clients you recently worked on. Um, obviously, if you're a business, it's, um, it's a little bit more straightforward. But how long does your current month end process take? Um, and then what would you rather be doing with that time if you could like reduce it? Um, or what would the client rather be doing? Because again, that's the kind of key pain point here. And then what would your dream standardized report look like? Now, it sounds like a lot of people actually already have um, standardized reports. So maybe there's there's no change, in which case question two is pretty, pretty easy. Um, if there's anything that you kind of change about it, what, what would that kind of um, look like? And that will help us for the in-product application a little bit today. So again, I'll give you a few minutes and then I'll uh, jump back on the mic. Perfect. So that was a quick, quick couple of minutes, but hopefully that was enough time for people to jot down some answers. Um, in hindsight, one that I'd be quite keen to to know. So anyone's kind of um, brave enough to say in either the Q and A or the or the chat, it'd be good to know how often you kind of you benchmark or like check how long your your process is is taking, um, or whether you just kind of you're always fighting the fire of of making the deadline. Um, whether again that's uh, in house or in practice, we'll be keen to to know that or email me afterwards. But um, yeah, I think a lot of um, these process things we should be reviewing them regularly to make sure they're still fit for purpose, whether that's the tool or the actual um, process. Uh, cool. So, in product application, so let me hop into Fathom. Um, so, again, not going to be like an end to end demo or anything here. Um, but it's going to be a bit of a guide on how a couple of tips and tricks on how you can really kind of streamline your, your reporting. So if we jump into reporting and those of you who uh, already use Fathom will, will be well acquainted with this. Um, but those who aren't, I'll provide a little bit of a kind of context and then we can kind of jump into it. So there are always predefined templates that come out of the box uh, and these kind of range from uh, just his, just kind of historical actual, so just forecasting and that kind of mix of the two. And from fairly lengthy 14-page reports all the way down to kind of short, snappy two two-page variance reports. So if you want to just quickly uh, spin off something as like an idea, um, this is quite a, a nice way to do that. Or if you want to not start with like a blank canvas, for instance, again, this is a nice way to do that because you can take any of these reports uh, so I just pick on the monthly performance report as an example. You can take that and really kind of um, trim it down if you want to and then add certain bespoke um, elements. So these are always um, available um, in, in the software. And again, I'm sure there's similar things elsewhere as well. Um, but definitely leverage this for an initial time saving if you're not too sure um, initially what you want to, to show. Uh, a tactic I've actually seen quite a lot of people use uh, on the SME side quite nicely is they've sent a pretty lengthy report initially and then just gone through and like taking out entire sections. Actually, I'll, I'll showcase that really quickly. So I picked this monthly performance report, create a report, um, little warning, et cetera, et cetera. Um, that has gone down here, I think.
So here we've got the kind of December report. If I want to just trim sections out, if I go to the outline, we can see there's um, a few different sections. If I just delete this one, delete another one, so on and so forth, you can actually go to specific sections as well and think actually don't like this one either, delete it. And again, we're not going to go into crazy detail on this um, today in terms of the demo, but you can. Um, kind of edit specific charts and stuff. Again, people from the fan will know how all this works. If you're not, we can schedule like a in-depth demo later on. So you can not only um, kind of binary say yes or no to a section that's one part of a default template, you can also customize your existing um, templates to basically make that a custom one. So we've now uh, made this the report that we want. So we'll just go, um, you know, first ever template or something I could type that'd be helpful uh cool you can again add your kind of color or whatever you want to do pick something a little less offensive on the eyes there cool or image logos whatever whatever we'll leave this as is for now so now we've created this report and what um some people do and like there's nothing wrong with this if you create like a, a specific um, report just for one uh, like client or like one stakeholder or just the one board meeting, um, then this this does work. You can just hit download in the bottom left hand corner, and then you get the PDF to then send off um, to the the stakeholders in question. If I go back to the report center here and go to draft, that keeps bouncing around on me. Which first ever template down here. Okay, cool. So now if I go into download here, that will obviously download. Um, to a PDF as well. So to a couple of different workflows, but you get the same end product. Um, but the other way you can kind of deliver this report is invite people in to, to see it. So if I go into actually a couple of things, take a step back. So when you invite people in to, to see this report, you can decide whether they can see draft or published. And I always advise people if they're not going to be kind of working on the report itself, they're just a stakeholder who's going to view it. It's like a client or a um, you know, like a CEO perhaps, and maybe the CFO or the um, FC is creating that report internally. If you're creating the report, you want to be working on the draft stuff because it might not quite be be ready. Um, but if it's published, you can say, actually, you know, like we've checked it, we've gone through an internal process, this is good to go, it's got a sign off, we can now send it to the um, the main stakeholder. So whenever you invite people in, I recommend um, people who are going to be on the on the keys, as it were, can then see published reports and so you know with certainty, right, that's been sent off. So if I do that now, I'm just going to hit the three dots and hit publish. You can send a notification email. I'm not going to do that now because it will send it to every person uh, at Fathom who has access to this demo company. Um, but if I now hit publish report, it will appear obviously in the publish report folder for this specific company. And I can hit uh, view. And then there's this, this online commentary. So this is just one way you can deliver the report. And in a way, it's a way that you can save time or at least work async because you don't have to wait for a specific meeting to go over everything. So some people prefer to do it more async and then have um, the kind of points raised before they get to the board meeting or the client meeting, which is um, just one way you can kind of approach it. If I scroll down here, if I pick on um, a private event nights, let's say, so this is a growth KPI that's uh, one under target. Uh, I could just say a comment. Can we increase the private event night um, pipeline? <laughs> Add a comment or have my name kind of timestamp. Um, if you sign into Fathom, uh, there'll be a little notification icon top right hand corner. So you can collaborate back on this. And then you can also just pull this up in the meeting. So rather than like printing off, you know, paper, killing trees, et cetera, you can actually show this in a meeting and go through the comments live. So that's just one workflow you can do, um, which uh, again saves a little bit of time because it's not everyone with their own separate kind of documents um, kind of discussing it and maybe duplicating efforts, it's now it's all on this one um, online view. If you're the person who's creating the um, report and you accidentally hit publish, or you think actually, no, that's not quite right, or maybe here, let's say AP day should be um, showing something, not zero days, you can quickly go back into edit and reverse it back. So you can do that, but the person who accesses um, as the stakeholder view only cannot. So that's just an individual report, this first ever template that we're creating, um, which isn't actually yet a template, but we'll do that shortly. Um, 
what you can do though to get real um, time savings there's two things if it's if you only have the one entity um, in fathom you can schedule the report to run off so if i go to scheduled reports here you can see there's nothing scheduled if i go to create schedule um, i'd always recommend again keeping it in draft so you can get that final level of approval before it goes into that published folder, particularly if you have that online view. But even if you don't have people coming in and seeing it, I think it's just useful to have that distinction between work in progress and, and basically sent. So if I, I'll leave it on draft report for that um, very reason. If I now uh, go to actually save it as a template first. So if we go to published, if I hit the three dots, I can save this as a template. Um, so first ever template again. Still not able to type too cold today in the UK with the fingers. Um, if I create that template, it's now here, and you can share the uh, the template sharing as well. So I can copy it to another specific company, or I can just say actually everyone can can access um, this. So I can say everyone, but who can edit it? Maybe maybe just me, maybe other people. So again, there's a lot of different ways you can structure this if you have multiple. Um, entities on Fathom, and again, if you're like a firm who's doing this as an actual service, you'll probably have a boatload of people on Fathom, and there's different kind of hierarchies you can structure it. And you can see it down here, actually. So I've got MTL first out of template, which I've created my Cape Town Coffee Roasters company, um, but then it's not shared with anyone, so it's just for this entity. Um, but then other templates, we've got a cash template, an example one that's shared with um, everyone else, 162. So now it's as a custom template, and I would um, recommend people uh, use custom templates. Again, I think that's probably one of the key takeaways from this webinar. So if you use Fathom and don't have a custom template, it's probably at least one action. Um, but Because from here, you can then schedule the report and again, copy it across. So one element to copy across is the scalability that I mentioned at the start. It saves you the time. You're not duplicating it because that's pretty tedious to have to go kind of have two screens up. Uh, and kind of reverse engineer one report to another. It also defeats, um, to some extent, the uh, element of automation that tech should be be giving you. But when I now go back to scheduled reports, now I've created that um, template. I can pick first every template. Um, I finally we do months, quarters, and years in terms of reporting um, cadence. So if I pick month, you can pick days after the end of the month, which um, Everyone that's called probably knows is super necessary for kind of bookkeeping purposes. So maybe we have it as four. And again, you can have a notification that when the report is created. So if you schedule, I've got a question actually from a knowledge attendee, which this is answering. So the question is, can you send a notification email to someone for a draft report not yet published? Um, so if you schedule it, you um, you can basically, um, which is what I do. Otherwise, you can just comment on. The report and like tag them in and then they'll um be able to see that when the next uh, next sign in cool and then so i'll actually um I will, again i won't put notification because there's a bunch of people i found them have access to this account um but i'll yeah acknowledge this warning and this is really important because it said, tells you that who can actually see this report so i've got 24 people who can access um this draft report and I hit create schedule, it's going to appear here. So I can um, see when it's next coming up. So the 4th of Jan will be the next um, time this template is going to run off for, for Cape Town Coffee Roasters. I can go into settings and change everything that I just did. Of course, I can also just pause it. So for whatever reason, that, that pops up thing actually now, 4th of Jan, you know, we're not going to, I don't really know why you skip a month, for instance, but if you just didn't want to use it um, yet, yeah, maybe it's not as applicable um, for that month. You can do a different um, template, perhaps. You can just hit pause and it will show as inactive and it obviously won't, won't come on. So there's some, some options there as well. Um, Awesome. So I think that's all I was going to show in the product. Again, there's a lot of like customization. So I, I definitely recommend people to invest the time up front to get to the point where you have this template that you like to, to use. You also notice that here you can create the report from this template again, and it's never like locked off. Um, so you can always edit the template that you created. Um, again, depending on um, how you share the template, you might be the only person who can actually edit it afterwards, which obviously serves some, for some um, kind of, it was quite useful, I guess, if you have a bigger team, but the reverse also applies. You can share it and have the rest of the team 
edit this template uh, if you want to. And again, just like normal Fathom, you can add all these layouts and add your forecasting and all that sort of um, sort of fun stuff. Cool. Actually, the other thing I should say, just for some in the products, is going to come up in it as a tactic. If you haven't considered this yet, particularly if you are an SME, something which I, I, I've seen a few Fathom users do, which has been um, actually quite a good idea is you can create different reports and different templates for different stakeholders so this won't work if you invite them in because if you invite them in they have access to the entire company and all of the published reports you can't lock off a specific report just for the you know the board in this instance maybe first have a templates for like i don't know a marketing department so we don't go to that level of detail in terms of access to so like all or nothing for the published report folder but if you are going to download the pdf that's quite a nice option so you can have for instance, the board um, or the C-suite can have access to everything and collaborate online here and they have all the, you know, dividend um, information, the cash information, the payroll information, et cetera, et cetera, which you might, might not want to give to like a, a CMO, for instance, or probably not, you would give a CMO, probably like a business unit director or something or subsidiary. Um, however, you can create a template just for them uh, and have that kind of, um, automate every month you just hit check the numbers hit download and send that off so that is another way you can kind of add additional insight um, as part of the same package okay cool let me jump back here so a couple tactics to run through then we'll spin up the end of webinar poll and um, again any questions please do fire them through um, as we go. So obviously tactic one, fairly straightforward, create your monthly management reporting template or templates. As I mentioned, you can have um, more than one uh, depending on how big your portfolio is. If you've got a bunch of clients, you might have an industry specific. Um, if you are part of a big consolidated group, you might have a couple of different sub, sub consolidations that have uh, unique reporting requirements. So you can create all of these templates um, that again, is an upfront um, time investment but then kind of it will pay itself off and more uh, as time goes on so tactic two schedule the report again doesn't have to be monthly but i think a monthly cadence makes quite a lot of sense but depending on your business you may think actually quarterly is is fine in which case you know do, do that but i think the more often you keep these K kpis and core financials front of mind um the more chance that nothing goes um askew or a miss uh, and hopefully you can hit those growth targets that uh, that you're looking for tactic three i think this is um really really important i think if there's any takeaway you can have from all these webinars this week it's is have a have a pretty robust process and like review that process regularly so tactic three is defining a process um to deliver your reports like who who's going to deliver it um who has to sign it off uh, what teams will be working on it? Um, how are you going to get feedback from the recipient? Like, do they like it? Do they like it? Prefer it's PDF? Do they want it to be like physical? Do they want it to be emailed? What about the online view that we just showed? Or even just like a loom so you can record yourself speaking over the report uh, and provide that kind of advice because it's great to have, you know, like a actual P&L for six months, let's say. But the real kind of advice, whether you're in practice or in-house, is what to do with that information. If you're not like an accountant and you view like a, a wall of numbers, it might not be that helpful. But if you say, actually, gross profit's gone up because of this or this, or uh, revenue's gone down because of X or Y, you can actually uh, kind of provide that advice. Of course, you can type this into the report, which is what a lot of people do, which is great. But the loom um, or even like the, the copy of the email that you're attaching it to perhaps um, can have these kind of key summary actions or like points to discuss, which is quite a nice way of delivering the advice and not just saying, hey, here's, you know, 14 pages, try and work it out yourself type thing. View the template every quarter. So um, I see this quite a lot in in tech, just in general. Like, um, and the same goes for like a report. People sign up to to something, uh, whatever tech that is, and it will change over time. And it might not still be like the best the best option. Uh, same with the reporting template. You might create a report when you kind of first start with a software, even like Excel, like an old school kind of slide deck in, in PowerPoint or something. You might think, yeah, that, that works really well. We're going to use this for this client forevermore. But then, you know, 
a year, two years later, you know, maybe the board changes, you send it to a new CEO and it's like, actually, why are we tracking those KPIs? Like, why are we using just pie charts? Like whatever the, the kind of, um, yeah, whatever the detail is, I think just really kind of have a process for reviewing the template. If you're doing this at scale and the templates are fairly standardized, of course, there's also that um, efficiency gain there that you're not reviewing 50 individual reports, which are all very customized and different. You can review the templates. Um, and again, you know, if you do have that, you'll know that some the clients or some like stakeholders will want a very specific report, in which case you don't have too much option to say no. Um, but if you can standardize as much as possible, it is um, good for reviewing it going forward as well. And I'd recommend um, every quarter because I think the longer you leave it, the bigger the review. But again, you'll uh, be best placed for, for this as, as your team because you'll know um, exactly how your reporting process and templates work. And again, tactic number five, I think this is the last one, is consider different reports for different stakeholders. So um, just because the board has always got a PL, and uh, doesn't mean um, you can't spin up like a KPI specific report using custom KPIs for more operational um, stakeholders who want to know the information, but you might not want to share all of the, the sensitive financial data with them. So you can create different reports and different report templates um, for those uh, effectively different groups of, um, of stakeholders. So definitely consider that um, as well. So action. So I'm going to spin up the last poll here. Hopefully that was um, helpful. If there's even like one thing you can take away <clears throat> from that, then that's, um, that's a win in my books. But um, please do write down any actions that you think you can take from this. I'll spin up that second poll now, uh, if you thought it was useful or not. Um, if you prefer this sort of practical reflections and actions with um, bulleted tactics, or if you prefer the um, thought leadership webinars with kind of peers um, explaining their, their kind of war stories, as it were, or if you'd actually like both to say you're indifferent. <laughs> Um, so that's now gone live in your Zoom window. Um, again, please do have some actions. I'd hate to think that people um, sat on this for 30 minutes, whatever it is, and there's no actions off the back of it. But if that is the case, let me know. Um, and if you need to get in touch with me for any reason, um, and whether it's content that you've heard today or something about Fathom or just anything in general, my email is there. So feel free to reach out to me um with any questions that you do have as i said at the start just in case you missed it this is being recorded so you'll receive a recording early um early to mid next week hopefully if that doesn't hit your inbox uh in a week's time again reach out and say hey matt still have another recording can you help me out each recording for the webinar series this week will contain a or come with sorry like a accompanying pdf that'll go over a few of the high level points and a little checklist that you can uh, essentially score your business or firm against um again to be a bit more thought provoking so you can see um how you um uh, yeah how you're going basically perfect well thank you everyone for joining today hopefully that was uh, was helpful um any questions please do get in touch have a great rest of your day and a great weekend